What's going on guys, I'm Josh, and this week I shot a protest called United in Outrage, a protest that encouraged people to march for any issue they have with President Trump. Now, protests are a phenomenal opportunity to take photos because you have interesting people in interesting places doing things with a lot of passion that want their photographs to be taken desperately. Basically, the ultimate photographic combination. Fascist! In today's video, I'm gonna be giving you 12 tips on photographing protests, and I'm not talking about those boring protest photos that are stand there and smile with your fun sign shots. I'm talking about interesting photos that borrow from strategies in photojournalism and street photography. This video is about photography, not politics, and my goal is to keep it objective. There are plenty of intelligent and idiotic people on both sides of the political spectrum, but the six or seven counter protesters who showed up for this were a provocative bunch, hopefully more provocative than the slightest little fingerprint you may have noticed on my 360 camera, but who's to say? I'm so, so sorry. Anyway, starting off, first four tips are on positioning. Now, don't think of yourself as a participant in the march. When you're photographing it, you are trying to be all over the place, running around constantly. So, first of all, start off in front. This is where the people who are leading the protest are. It's the most passionate people. They're the front line. They're the people that encountered the passerbys and the counter-protesters first. So you're just getting a lot of impassioned interaction. Why are you in favor of child abuse and racism? I like to follow them for a while, being maybe 15 feet in front, walking backwards, making sure I don't trip over curbs, while capturing photos of the most passionate protesters. Tip number two, remain stationary. So while it's fun to run along with the protesters, a great way to take a break and capture lots of interesting people is to post up in one spot and let the entire protests pass you. Make sure you find an unobtrusive spot like behind a garbage can or some sort of area where they're not having to navigate around you to pass you. So just off to the side by a little bit. This tip is particularly helpful at night when you're shooting in low light situations because as soon as you see a spot with nice lighting, you can post up there and ensure that all your photos are going to be beautifully lit as I did with these scaffolding pictures that had great overhead lights. Tip number three, find high ground. By getting above the protest, you have the opportunity to capture these dramatic shots that show the entire scale of the protest and how they take up an entire street or entire sidewalk or whatever area they're in. Just nice dramatic photos. Now if you can't find a place to get higher up, I recommend just crossing the street, being on the other side of the street, just getting some sort of distance from the protesters so you can show that the mass of people are as large as they actually are. When I'm shooting from across the street in New York, I personally like to do this when we're at intersections because you have long sweeping views behind them as opposed to just a singular building, making the shots look even more dramatic. And tip number four, join the protest. Become a part of it, march with people for a while, get to know people, join their chants if you want to. Whatever it takes, you might get some more intimate portraits out of this, you might get to know people who will invite you to other protests, or you're just having a good time. But being part of the energy is a really important thing. Matching people's mood is really, really helpful. You don't want to be this aggressive presence at a peaceful protest. You do have to learn how to adapt, and marching alongside people is a really helpful way to do that. And tip number five, this is an important one, you don't need a press pass to shoot public events. You're going to see journalists with their press passes at any of these events, but you do not need one. If people ask who you're shooting for, you can tell them, just say you're shooting for fun, or you might submit to some publications. Whatever it takes, just make sure people know that you are shooting this seriously and not messing around, and you will be respected. Moving on to people you're going to want to look for. Tip number six, photograph the police. Self-employed. Take photos for What's your tax number? I prefer social security if that's cool with you. Or debit card. <laughs> what? What's that for? Yeah? yeah you think I'm undercover? Yeah, you're an undercover. You I wish I was. I, I don't look tough enough, though. Would you come out, Fabio? <laughs> Bro, is this thing? Yeah. This is great. You guys honestly have the best spot, too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're both sides. The police are some of the sources of the most iconic protest photos. Now, even if this isn't the case, police are still the arbitrators between both sides and the ones just making sure to rein in the chaos. So they tend to follow the action. If you talk to them, they might have some hot takes and they're working hard. So you can capture some nice dramatic photos of them doing their job. Now, it's an interesting thing as a photographer because you want, on one hand, excitement. You want fun action. You want people yelling at each other, et cetera, et cetera. But as a citizen, you're hoping for peaceful expressions of our First Amendment rights. So it's sort of a double-edged sword. 
I just want to warn you guys that protests can be dangerous and you should keep an eye out, be very aware of what's happening around you, know when there's the right time to leave if anyone seems hostile or anything like that. Follow the police, there will be interesting photos. Number seven, photograph the counter protesters. Whether you agree with them or not, photographing them tells the other side of the story and they're often a great sense of excitement because there are plenty of people that protest just lackadaisically joining in with their friends, but to be a counter protester, you have to have some very strong beliefs, which makes for excellent photos. Number eight, find the most rowdy people and follow them for a while. This is a strategy that I employ in my street photography all the time, and I tend to look for actually similar people. So I look for just very impassioned people who are loud, outspoken, or just enthusiastic in their emotions. Children and old folks are also great subjects to shoot at these events because of their interesting ways of protesting. Sometimes it's with a nap, other times it's very impassioned and beautiful. So definitely keep an eye out for these people. Number nine, photograph the bystanders. The people that happen upon these protests tend to be really enthusiastic in one direction or the other for short periods of time. Sometimes it's a show of support, other times it's against it, or other times they just really want the crowd to move out of their way. And all of these make for phenomenal photos. So keep an eye out on how people react to these protests and don't just photograph the protesters. Moving on to a couple of composition strategies, tip number 10, focus on one sign. So when you're shooting with a shallow depth of field, I really like those photos where you have one sign of focus in the foreground and a bunch of people behind them out of focus in the back, which draws a lot of emphasis into that one sign and makes for a powerful looking, somewhat standard protest image. So this works really great when you're staying stationary and having people pass you, just waiting for that right sign that you want to have in focus. Tip number 11, shoot decontextualized images. So this is where my street photo background comes into play. I really like shooting these tighter cropped images that don't have any signs in them because that's when these shots get really abstract. You can't tell that you're at a protest anymore. And now you're just seeing very interesting behavior that when you remove the context of the protest seems even more bizarre. So I, I love these types of shots. They're a very fun way to practice street photography. And if you live in a town where there's not that much action, there's not much of a city, protests and marches are an excellent way because you have a lot of people who are around you and everyone's down to have their photograph taken. So great place to practice street photography. And if you haven't shot street before, you should definitely check out my tutorial. Link to that right over here. Last off, tip number 12, just a couple general things to make sure you have the best time doing this. Make sure you follow your city or town's event calendars, maybe even get on some mailing lists so that you never miss all the most important protests, parades, and marches. Also, make sure you travel light, bring some snacks and a water bottle just so that you can keep going for a long time because there's no sense in passing out in the middle of the protest. There are way better places to pass out, so bring some water. Hope you guys enjoyed that 360 coverage and found this tutorial helpful. If you go and shoot a event, whether it be a march, a protest, or a parade, definitely let me know. Shoot me a comment or an Instagram DM. I'd love to see your work. And finally, I will end this on Another favorite march of mine, and that was in New Orleans this year, and that was the march in honor of the Saints not making it into the Super Bowl because of a bogus call this year. What an impassioned march. I just shot video the entire time, so enjoy that. It just dawned on me, I wanted to show you this Saints video to end this on a more positive, less politically divisive note. But if you are a sports fan, especially a Saints fan, this is the most divisive thing in your life right now. So I'm sorry if I've enraged you in multiple ways. This was meant to be an objective video. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this, aren't super pissed off at me, and I will see you eventually.